we've got other terms such as effusion. So we talk about pleural effusion. So we've got fluid filling the pleural space. Perihyla. So we often just, um, see things described as peri as in adjacent to. So perihyla would be adjacent to the, the hyla region. Um, and, and and some other lots of terms that you'll you'll see predominantly in radiology reports that you know, are important to get used to because although like as I said previously you are not being trained to write reports an image itself viewing an image on the ward or in your department um, should be viewed in conjunction with the report that's been provided with it um, and therefore having an understanding of the terminology used as well as having an understanding of the image that's been provided in front of you is uh, you know ultimately important to be able to put those two things together to get the full picture uh, from, from what's being provided. So understanding technique, why is it important or why do I think it's important for you as advanced practitioners outside of radiology to understand technique? Um, well, as we've said before, it's really important for you to understand normal and what the normal anatomy looks like on a standard chest x-ray projection. But understanding, like I say, how that x-ray has been taken or understanding the visual information in front of you so you can make an appreciation of, well, actually, that's not been taken in a standard projection or there are some other technical factors that I need to take into consideration before I make any judgment from the image in front of me. So, we're going to go through a number of slides with a number of different um, topics and talk about each one and what those factors mean for the image in front of you. So inspiration, we talked before on that really good example. Uh, here we can see a very good inspiration. We should be seeing nine posterior ribs, six anterior ribs above the dome of the diaphragm. And again, let's move back onto here. So we count the anterior ribs. And again, it's the same ribs. We're just seeing them either anteriorly to the body or posteriorly to the body. Again we're looking at a three-dimensional structure on a two-dimensional image so obviously we're seeing things you know a lot of interposition of anatomy on top of each other and we need to have an appreciation of what we're looking at and what that means for the patient um so anterior ribs we can count them here one two three four five six and we're just getting a seventh possibly eight there above and posterior are these more horizontally kind of oriented ribs here so they're coming away from the uh from the spine so we've got one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can infer that this patient has taken a very good inspiration. Sorry, I keep looking off to the side because I've got a second screen that you can't see and it's showing me what the next slides are and I'm, so I'm, I haven't just got a tick. Um, so a good inspiration. So what can that mean for the image if the patient has taken a really massive inspiration, or the lungs are hyperinflated, well, all of a sudden we're seeing many, 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 many more ribs than we would in a normal projection. And all of a sudden we've got some flattening of the diaphragms here, we've got some blunting of the costophrenic angles, whereas on our very good example, we've got domes of the diaphragm with some costophrenic angles should form a sulcus or a, you know, a sharp angle. Um, so does this mean that there's some underlying pathology, that the patient, do they have COPD? The, you know, uh, or have they, are they just a tall patient that's taken a very, very, very big breath in because they tried to do their best in the x-ray department? Um, conversely, if we've taken a very shallow breath, or um, you may see it described on reports as a uh, suboptimal inspiratory result, um, yeah, poor inspiratory effort. Personally, I tend to shy away from reporting things as a poor effort because the patient may have tried their very best and put all their effort into it, but the resultant inspiration is still suboptimal. So here we've got some crowding of the ribs. We're not seeing as many either anterior or posterior ribs. Um, the heart all of a sudden looks a bit um, wider than normal. Um, we'll notice that the radiographers have kindly told us that these are AP projections, AP sitting on this one. So we can't infer too much from the heart size. And again, we're going to talk about that shortly. But just by having an understanding there of, well, this is standard. These are not standard. And why do they look different? Well, already, I hope that you can see that you've got an understanding of, well, we're seeing more ribs. We're seeing more lungs. We see that these lungs are slightly more crowded, more whiter, because they're not, you know, they're not as expanded. So the tissue is a bit more crowded. So we have attenuated more of the x-rays. Whereas here, they're a bit darker. There's more air in them. So the x-rays will be able to pass through. Okay. So 
For inspiration, there's some vascular crowding, slightly enlarged heart, ignore the AP. So AP, PA, what does that mean for our X-ray image? Well, again, we're looking at a three-dimensional structure on a two-dimensional image. Here we've got a little graphical representation of a patient. We've got a X-ray detector here, and then we've got the X-rays. Now X-rays, as they leave the X-ray tube, as we've seen in the previous slide, now this is backwards because I'm trying. So they, they leave the X-ray tube in divergent rays. So X-rays don't travel in straight lines. They travel in divergent rays. Um, so what does that mean for X-ray? Well, because we're looking at anterior uh, structures within the chest that may be anterior um, to the body or posterior to the body, if, for in this instance, the heart here is it's a, it's a more anterior structure, so if the patient is being x-rayed in the AP projection, because of these divergent rays, there's always an element of magnification to any x-ray, and this exaggerates the magnification of the heart, so it looks bigger. Whereas if we are taking a PA image, so here we all the way around, so now our patient is facing the x-ray detector, much like our um, model in the first uh, slide, now we can see that the x-rays, let me see if I can do this, the x-rays are traveling in divergent rays and even though we are still getting a little bit of magnification because you know, like, as if you move a magnifying glass further away or um, closer to your eye things get um, you know, magnified to different degrees, we are minimizing the magnification here so we have a more accurate representation of the heart size of the image. So again, if I click back here there are greater magnification, so our heart is going to look, that's helpful because it's same, there we go, it's going to look bigger on the x-ray. And again, let me see if I can, so here, PA image, because there's nothing to tell us otherwise, we've got a regular heart size, or this is a normal anatomy, but we can make an inference that the heart is normal. Whereas on an AP projection here, the heart looks much bigger, but because it's AP, that may be a projectional representation, so it may be magnified, so we can't make any um, accurate measurement of the heart or the mediastinal contours because we've got the increased magnification of an AP projection. So similarly, lordosis and kyphosis can have an effect on the image that's produced because again we have divergent rays emanating from the x-ray tube passing through the patient and depending on where they interact with the body depends what anatomy is then projected or the visualization of the anatomy on the imaging detector so if we have a lordotic patient, so rather than our nice upright patient like we saw on the original image, if we have a lordotic patient, all of a sudden we have some, we have flattened diaphragms, we have a slightly widened upper mediastinal contour, the hyla are more prominent, clavicles are you know, flying away off the top of the image here, um, the heart may appear slightly more rounded, the ribs are a lot more horizontal. So the only thing we can really infer from here or make a decision on is the lungs accurately because we're not seeing our standard projection of the heart because the x-rays have interacted with the body uh, in a, uh, a non-standard position. So all of a sudden we're not seeing them in the normal configuration. And that doesn't mean that we can't make an analysis of that, but it means that we have to have an understanding that there are technical factors that limit uh, the way we're seeing the x-ray. And similarly, if the patient is kyphotic or slumped forward, the x-ray is going to interact with the body and project onto the detector differently. So all of a sudden, we the, the heart is now projected down onto the diaphragm. Uh, the hyaline now appear low and the clavicles have come right down. Um, the lungs can appear smaller because uh, uh, of the way that the x-rays have interacted with the, the patient in the image. Uh, the ribs now have an, an exaggerated curve. 
Whereas here we've seen them nice and well, not nice and flat and flattened out. Um, and I've got an exaggerated curve due to kyphosis because we're seeing that three dimensional image in a slightly different representation.